Well, when I was growing up, um, Vero Beach was truly a very small town. And I think the population couldn't have been any more of uh, Vero Beach proper than, uh, say, 5,000 or 6,000 people. And I can remember my dad saying to my mother one evening that he'd been into town that day and he'd come to a decision that we'd have to move. And she said, why? And he said, I was in town on 14th Avenue, which is the main street. He said, I saw people I didn't even know on the street. You know, that's time to move for <laughs> a bunch of strangers in town. As teenagers, we used to, on Saturday mornings, we would gather on the edge of the river, uh, rent a little boat with a little kicker on it, and take off up the river. And those were, those were the first memories I have of enjoying what we know as the Indian River. Some of us rode bicycles, some of us were transported by our family. But we all got there, and it took us all day. And we enjoyed watching the, uh, especially the dolphins. Oh my goodness, the dolphins used to come to see us, and they would ride with us and right beside us. Um, but that was the beginning of, of a real interest in what we have that Mother Nature has provided for us. because when the land goes, um, it's gone forever. It's not coming back, ever. And if we want the natural land, we need to save it, and we need to save it now. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is very excited about the partnership that we're developing or have developed with the Indian River Land Trust. One of the reasons for that is that, is that the Land Trust has acquired these just fantastic properties along the Indian River Lagoon in, in Indian River County. Uh, those properties include some of the last remaining uh, salt marshes uh, in, the, in the state of Florida and, and along the Indian River Lagoon. The Land Trust is unique in that it determined to preserve the banks of the lagoon by owning them, not by enforcing rules and regulations against people. But at this point, I think they've accumulated in several miles on both the east banks and the west banks. And that's a wonderful thing. So we've been very fortunate, and the Land Trust has done a fantastic job in preserving the lagoon I remember from the time I was a child, and preserving a mangrove forest like this, uh, which you don't find in many other places up and down the east coast of Florida. I'm especially proud of the, the endeavor right now in the success of saving um, waterfront land. Waterfront land right on the lagoon. Land that was uh, scheduled to be built on, uh, have you know, apartment houses and docks and boats and all sorts of things. And then the, you know, the fish would not survive, the lagoon would not be the same, the view would be gone, the quality of, of Vero Beach would be gone. The Fish and Wildlife Services partnership with the Indian River Land Trust is through the, the Services Coastal Program. And uh, this, is a, this is a program that provides funding for, uh, generally for restoration of, of properties uh, in, in Florida watersheds and watersheds throughout the nation. We view our partnership with the Indian River Land Trust as, an, as pretty much an ideal partnership where we, we're, we're in on the ground floor by helping them to develop management plans uh, for their properties and we expect that in the future uh, we'll provide funding for helping them to restore these properties. I have to give credit to um, people who've come here from other parts of, of the country. Um, their dedication to keeping the island in its natural stages as much as possible 
deserves, uh, deserves a tremendous amount of credit. The Indian River Lagoon is the most biologically diverse estuary in North America. Uh, it, it hosts a huge variety of, of fish and invertebrate species. And most people don't realize that the, the lagoon uh, hosts over 2,100 varieties of, of plant species. It's interesting to try to think about what the future holds for this community and many others just like us. But I would hope that the future of this community would be based on knowledge that people gain, things that people have learned about how to live with nature. Because if, if we don't educate, if we don't educate the young people, it's going to disappear. And we can't afford to let it disappear. One of the big things that needs to happen in that regard is for the local governments to become more involved especially with educational programs to, to teach people how to improve that water quality and how to better take care of the lagoon. I have been blessed to live in this community so long, back to, actually since 1929, and I intend to be here at least for the next 10 years. And while I'm here, I'm going to uh, watch with great interest to see and help with the efforts to keep this area the beautiful spot that it is. But I just don't want the ecological part of this county to make any drastic changes. And we can't afford to let this happen. But it will happen unless we are vigilant and unless we try to educate the young people who are coming along because it's gonna be their job. And, and they'll do a good job.